Hello, Ryan here, AK Mac. Today, I wanted to talk and highlight the ship pipeline stages or the process in which it goes to to create the ships. I was recently asked to elaborate on the ship pipeline and explain what each stage involves and how many stages there are. Many of you may already know about the ship pipeline or know exactly what happens in the ship pipeline, but there are a lot of new citizens out there, welcome, of course, who may not have a clue about what this involves. So, sort of long story short, or TLDR, there are 13 stages to the ship pipeline. These are design, concept, white box, gray box, final 3D art, animation, LODs, tech setup for the hangar, hangar ready, damage status, tech setup flyable, flyable, and then an update pass if necessary. The pipeline is basically with each discipline or area of development in Star Citizen, be it environments, characters, ships, they've created a set of stages to simplify and speed up the whole process from start to finish. Before the pipeline was around, it would take months. For example, the, the constellation, don't quote me on this, but the constellation I think took about nine months to be complete. Now it takes roughly one to two months or even weeks in some cases depending on the size of the ship. Although the, the non-ship pipelines will vary slightly, there's like, you know, for example, there won't be uh, a flyable or hangar ready status for say the environmental pipeline. The principles remain the same and it is down to these pipelines that the ships and everything else comes out much quicker and to a greater standard. So anyway, I'm going to break it down each stage and just explain what each stage involves. So when you see someone announces a ship is in whatever say white box or gray box you'll know exactly what pro you know whereabouts it is so to start with design is the first stage this is where they discuss the potential ship and its particular needs so for example the orion is a mining ship they needed something smaller to assist them with the mining mechanics so that they don't have to wait for the orion to be built so they needed a smaller mining ship so the prospector is what they came up with Within this part, they'll they'll talk about the role it will fill, what kind of loadout it'll have, and basically all the theoretical aspects so they have a full understanding of the ship before taking it further, before putting pen to paper. Up next is concept. This is where the artists become involved. They take the design notes and work together with the designers to create the concept images of how the ship will look, giving us kind of a proper feel of the aesthetic. It can take a little time in this stage because it's back and forth with amends until they meet the design specifications. Once finalised and approved by Chris Roberts, they release what is known as a concept sale. And this is where we will be able to buy the ship for the first time. It's at its cheapest price. It includes lifetime insurance and hangar flare. But also at this stage, they will likely have the first 3D renders. They're not detailed or clean, but this allows for the logistical and technical details to be tackled. So up next is White Box. And if you've seen my latest Buccaneer update video, the Buccaneer is currently in White Box. And this is where they can test the very basics of the ship and its code, ensuring that the internal structure is operational and its simplest of tasks are working. So they've got the general shape, they have the layout, and they can test the initial flight characteristics like stopping, starting, pitching, rolling, so on and so forth. They will also carry out tests in White Box several times to help optimize the code and check it's consistent. So after white box is grey box. This is the stage where they can start fleshing out the geometry to pretty much its final shape and scale. They start adding more detailed items like turrets and hard points, ensuring that they're articulating correctly and checking the lines of code used for this operation is working well and is good. CIG used this stage to test features and the operation of the ship as well. At the grey box stage, the ship is pretty much close to its final state. Next is final 3D art, and this is the process of ensuring that every physical part of the ship is modelled in 3D and made ready to be fitted to the ship. So, for example, the missile pods will be modelled and ready but not fixed to the ship and then handed to the animation team, which leads nicely on to the next stage, animations. At this stage, CIG will ensure that every animation needed for the ship is moving correctly. Things like doors, seats, landing gear, thrusters and wings. Basically, every movable part on the ship must animate in the manner it is supposed to. So from there, it is LODs. Now, LOD stands for level of detail. This is the stage in which the ships are optimized for the engine. So CIG will use a process of culling, which will remove certain parts of the ship's anatomy at specific ranges. And only once you are close enough will, you, will these parts start to render in. This process is used in every discipline and helps increase the, the items needed rendering, thus making the game run smoother. So the next stage from there is tech setup for the hangar. Now there are two stages of tech setup. 
one for hangar, the next one is for flight. So for that hangar, they need to make sure that you can enter the cockpit, you can walk around its interior, and often interact with items and particular stations within the ship. In order for these stations to work, they need to set up for each functionality, allowing them to be interactable. The audio gets hooked up, plus they have a lighting pass for both the interior and exterior. Next is hangar ready, and at this stage, this is this ship looks like what it's supposed to. It's ready for us to view and interact with in our hangars. During the hangar ready stage, CIG will often release another sail. This will be its second sail. It's more expensive than during the concept phase, plus with a varied insurance timescale. The price gradually increases over time to reward the early backers and the early purchasers. So next up is the damage states. The vehicle destruction system is carried out by technical artists and designers. And if you don't know, the, the damage for Star Citizen ships will be location based. It will persist and vary depending on the type of weapon being used. So ballistics, for example, will punch holes energy will scorch and melt surfaces. Damage, they say, is added in layers. So you've got the exterior, the underlaying skin, and the geometry, and they all use shaders to blend together to represent the damage visually. For example, metal will bend or distort. During the stage, they will test every area of the ship, ensuring that the ship visibly shows the damage and often involves going back and forth and amending it until it does work properly. Also during the stage, the visual effects are set up for damage and explosions, and then they are tested. So the next stage is tech setup for flyable. This is the second tech setup stage. This time it's all about the necessary tech needed for flight. So making sure that the thrusters all move correctly, the panels and UI work in conjunction. They finalize and implement their vehicle stats, the weapons, the thruster configuration balance until they are satisfied with the results. And then it goes to the final stage, which is flyable. Now this is then handed to us. However, it doesn't stop there. Obviously the community gets their hands on it and we begin to find issues and bugs which they would have missed but with the, the you know the small internal QA team. And then we will tell them what's going on. They will get it patched, fixed until it feels right. At this stage, there is generally another sale again with an increased price tag and less insurance duration. Now that was only 12 stages. The stage 13 is known as the update pass and is only needed if required. For example, the Cutlass is currently undergoing stage 13, the update pass, because when the Cutlass was originally designed, the pipeline was in its infancy. Now it's further fleshed out, the Cutlass must be brought up to the current standard they have with the ships now. So they go back through the pipeline and update the ship until it matches the current ship standard. Now every stage of this pipeline is very iterative. They are often going back and forth between designers, artists, animators, and Chris Roberts, who actually influences the progress throughout. Once it's out of grey box though, it doesn't take too long as each stage from there can often be worked out simultaneously and shared across varied disciplines. The pipeline unfortunately does not create an exact time scale for each ship. This will vary depending on the size and of the ship and obviously its particular role, plus how fleshed out the ship manufacturer style guides are. All the pipeline does is decrease the overall time scale for creating ships from start to finish, as well as help understand and organise what is needed when. Pipelines are imperative to the completion of Star Citizen, and although they may have held up its development somewhat early on, the delays are, in my opinion, totally worth it. Anyway, that is basically how the ship pipeline works. There are far more specific details within each stage. If you want to know them, you can look them up. But this is the sort of TLDR version of it. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. What ships are you most excited for for me? I just cannot wait to see the Caterpillar at the moment. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter and I shall see you next time.